It's Tuesday, so that means it is waiver day, and there is a lot to navigate. We had some unfortunate injuries, which raises the profile of some players, but is their situation a trap? Stay tuned as we talk through all of those, and of course, the news. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Hey, this is Austin Eckler, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, October 4th. I almost said a different Tuesday. date. I'm right. It's October 4th. We'll never know. That is correct. Thank you, computer. You already making Halloween plans, gentlemen? Ooh, uh, we got to come up with our costumes, fellas. We do. Um, I know what Alan Robinson can go as. Oh. A goodness, ghost! Goodness gracious. I mean, I don't want to start the show the way I ended it yesterday, but I will. <laughs> I look, I, I, I fully recognize he could also dress up as as burnt toast because his career's over. But um, no, this one, this one was ridiculous. It has been ridiculous in Los Angeles. They are not a good offense right now. They can't get the ball down the field. I didn't think Odell Beckham was that important to this offense or Robert Woods was, but Ooh. here's what I want. I want when the play begins, I want Matthew Stafford to look to the side of the field that Allen Robinson is attempting to run a route on. Just So he's so just so Allen Robinson is stacked with Cooper Cup then? Um, then he can look that way? Those plays, yeah, he does look that direction, uh but but it's just been frustrating and you've seen like you know Marcus Spears and Robert Griffin and all these other um people on Twitter complaining about it now I don't know if Alan Robinson is open on many of these routes but I certainly know that Matthew Stafford has no idea either <laughs> because it's just he's out there on it, it, it it's compounded I think he knows it's compounded by the fact that he's out there on every single snap of the game so when you watch him you see him Every single play, and you hope. Every play is a new hope. Sure. It's yeah, a new yeah, beginning. Yeah. You're like, this is the one that he'll look at. And the only way that you know he'll get a look is if he's inside the 10-yard line. Because uh, I think he's had a red zone target every single game. If they get inside the 10, they, they try a fade, it fails, and then they move on to Cooper Cup. And his, what, 14 catches last night or something? I, I think Stafford knows. Like, over the course of training camp and over the course of the preseason and everything, Stafford probably just recognized this is not going to work. I need to throw to somebody else. What is the status of Van Jefferson? <laughs> because yeah. it seems like uh, he'll have a role to play when he gets back. Yeah, $46 million for nothing. That's that's where it's interesting to but me. Th this is the whole compelling argument and point of Robinson to begin with. Sean McVay invested $46, $46 million in Allen Robinson. Is you... Uh, I have said... <laughs> Where you are currently sitting, because I did, that was me last year with Allen Robinson. He was on my team. I was very invested in what is going on with Allen Robinson and just watching going, I, I'm i not sure that he's good anymore. And the fact that he was able to take what he did last year. Oh, man. Trick an NFL team. Like, it's fantasy football players. It's it's rough that we, we missed on Allen Robinson, the hopes of being on this offense. We aren't the Rams. Do you know what we it costs do you know what it costs you to draft Allen Robinson exactly. in your draft? Exactly. Nothing. You We are not professional NFL scouts. We are we are guys who live in the basement of our parents and play fantasy football. And the Rams got it incredibly wrong. That is correct. Yeah, and, and so it's take solace in that. If you drafted Allen Robinson, just remember 
The Rams are paying him millions and millions and millions and millions and they, of dollars. This is why I do lay it at the feet of Sean McVay and Matthew Stafford to a degree. Allen Robinson might be completely toast, but Allen Robinson has historically been one of the lowest percentage separators in the National Football League for his entire career. He was never a separator. He was a contested catch. Throw him the ball and see what happens. I just wanted to see what happens to happen. But why would you see what happens when Cooper Cup is open on yeah, every see, single play? But the argument against that now is, yes, you're right. He can soak up a bunch of targets, but they are not explosive plays. I agree. They have lost uh, two of their games so far. Their offense, is, I mean, he forced it to Cooper Cup and threw a pick six last night. It, it's just not working, so it's frustrating. But um, They also cannot run the ball. Yeah, Correct. They, Odell Beckham Cam is... Cam not run the ball. <laughs> yeah. Odell Beckham is not their loss that really matters to me. It's Andrew Whitworth and the offensive line struggles not able to run the ball. I think that's part of why you you snap and you look for Cooper Cup, who you know is going to be open, even though it's an inefficient play. You know, it wasn't even 10 yards of reception. Their offensive line has problems, and it's okay yes. when you play against a mediocre defense. They can scheme away, but... The, the 49ers defense, we went into this game Seven saying... Seven sacks. Exactly. We, we, you know, it was like, they looked like a great defense, but they've played mediocre NFL teams. Now we're going to see, are they a good defense? And their pass rush against a really depleted Rams offensive line, hoo-ha. How are they going to do against Baker next week? Um, I think it's going to be really not fun to watch Baker Mayfield try and play football i think matt rules career ends next week okay i think it possible should possible. i don't i don't think it will well it should have ended earlier yes <laughs> um so that you know monday night football debo samuel we had been saying pick him up because the day was coming that you were going to get vintage debo he gave it to you a 57 yard touchdown where he broke tackles and bounced off of people and made Jalen Ramsey look stupid. Say, and he just made the Rams look like a bunch of clowns. Jeff on that Wilson play. was great. 18 yeah, for 74, had a 32-yard touchdown. Uh, was Jeff. George Kittle, um, uh -oh. <laughs> two for 24. Uh-oh. It's not good. Uh-oh. I mean, this is why Kyle Pitts is just such a better option at tight end. <laughs> no, I mean, he has not been targeted a lot, and you don't know if this is coming back from injury. Jimmy Garoppolo was not the starter two weeks ago. Um, he had a touchdown called back, so you were close, but no cigar. Yeah, I mean, he, he was, I believe, only blocking 11% of the time, so it, it, it wasn't an issue there. It was just the targets weren't going his way. On the Rams side, it was the Cooper Cup show, 14 for 122 in the loss. Tyler Higby yeah, is baby. a PPR monster right now. Um, I think this is, from what I was watching last night and early this season, when things when going gets tough in the pocket, it's Tyler Higby right now. It's it's I'm backpedaling, and Higby is running routes to save me, being Matthew Stafford, from disaster, and it's working. So... 10 for 73 on 14 targets. I mean, 14 targets for him, 19 for Cooper Cup. To me, it's he – Stafford was going to have two options, and the the process of the options really being Cooper Cup and Allen Robinson, I still think that over the offseason with the information we had, that was the sound process. It is incorrect now, and it's, it's Cooper Cup and Tyler Higby until – like if when Van Jefferson comes back, that could shake things up a little bit. That could affect where the target share is going. But in, until there's another good option for this team, Higby is going to be a very safe yardage play. And if Matt Stafford was not incompetent on two throws, Tyler Higby would have had at least one touchdown. Who has more targets on the season, TJ Hawkinson or Tyler Higby? Oh, it's got to be Higby. It is Higby. How about Mark Andrews? Probably Higby. How about Travis Kelsey? <laughs> okay. This is another way to say he has the most targets of yeah. all tight ends there is not someone ahead of Tyler Higby yeah it's been uh it's been an interesting season for the Rams in general uh a reminder the fantasy footballers will be live on Thursday night football this week uh, we will be covering the Colts Broncos game watching calling the game reacting with you answering fantasy questions uh 
potentially screaming at the television. Wolf. Potentially. We're going to cry together. You know that's happening. We're going to laugh together. Watching Melvin Gordon fumbles together. Oh, man. That's potential. Yeah. Five in his last five games. Is it five? I thought it was only four. Well, preseason. Uh, oh, okay. You gotta you gotta pile on when you got a chance to jump on the dog pile. I like it. You do whatever it takes. All right, let's move into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. Speaking of the Broncos, unfortunately, yesterday it was confirmed: Javante Williams a torn ACL, LCL, and um, boy. Jason, why don't you pronounce that word for us? A posterolateral corner injury. Uh, nailed it. No, uh, this is a significant, significant injury. If you think about, um, you know, not every ACL injury is the same. J.K. Dobbins was coming back from uh, an injury more akin to this one. J.K. Dobbins got injured over a month earlier than Javante Williams did this year. And right now, we are finally, probably this week, able to trust J.K. Dobbins. We still don't know if he'll ever return to pre-injury status. It'll probably be another year from now. But but this coming week is the first time you could plug him into your lineup with any kind of confidence. So fast forward, say it's the same timeline, another month into the season, you're talking about Javante Williams right. probably not being a very important highfalutin fantasy uh, option for next year. High, highfalutin? Uh -huh. Like going to now, upper echelon parties? and Now, is that is falutin a word, or is that just like you're you're stretching out the word flute, as in he's like a, a high-level flute player? No, it's a word. It's a word. It's, falutin? It's, it's a, highfalutin is a single word. Yes, it it's is. It's not two words. Wait. Hi, it's hi, not high space falutin. It's highfalutin. Mm -hmm. No hyphen? No hyphen. No hyphen. Highfalutin. You've high never flutin. heard of high flutin? I've heard the word, but I always figured people were saying, it's, it's, talk about high level flute players. It's, 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 <laughs> high, yes. No, uh, I mean, the, the, the point is, is Jason, I guess, at one point thought that uh, he was going to be a more pompous draft pick next year, mm -hmm. and now he's decided that might not be the case. Yeah, well, one of those uh, chest beating picks of uh, he's going to be so great, and instead, it's, it's really going to be. Deep into next year before we can maybe trust him again. So this is really upsetting because not only do you lose him now, uh, that is devastating. But, you know, we're in a keeper league. Andy, you just traded him in our keeper league to someone. You you took Jonathan Taylor away. And, Jeez. and it's like, well, maybe that player's playing for next year. But now that now that other manager's playing for next year with not that great an asset. It just introduces the whole world of, like, like you said, the Dobbins situation, they will make sure there's depth. That's step one, right? You have to make sure you have depth in Denver now. You can't just trust that Javante will carry the load because he's coming off a major injury. So you'll have an offseason signing, probably not Melvin Gordon, somebody else, or a draft pick. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to be – like the dynasty future of Javante Williams has become murkier than it, than it ever was before. Uh, Russell Wilson also dinged up his shoulder in the loss to the Raiders. His sore, according, according to Nathaniel Hackett. Uh, we expect him to play on Thursday. Mike B McDaniel announced that Tua Tungavailoa will be out this week against the Jets. Teddy Bridgewater will get the start. Jets are 2-2, two and two, right? Yes. Are they? Yes, they are. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there, <laughs> there's no way that, like, even if Tua had cleared whatever concussion protocols are now in place. They, they were the NFL was changing some things with the NFL PA. I don't know if we got a final on what was happening there. There was no way optically that Tua was playing this weekend. It was just you for public pressure. You can't do it. If the doctors came out and said, "I promise yes. you, he is fine," that the doctors would have all been fired. Yes. So he will not be playing. But but Teddy Bridgewater may throw left-handed in this game. Oh, <laughs> oh come on now. <laughs> oh gosh, but. But Teddy Bridgewater against the Jets, I mean, that's the timing of that is sensational for the Miami Dolphins for for whatever uh, the terrible circumstances they are in. At least they are playing against the Jets. I didn't, I didn't remember to do a almost upset last week, did I? I thought you did. I thought you did too. No, I don't, no, I don't believe so. I was shaking no. his head. No. All right. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, we. I'm uh, saying that because I'm thinking the Jets might win this ball game. 
Wow. Ooh. Did you remember it's that Zach Wilson's back? The one and oh Zach Wilson on the year, Mike? Yeah. Is that the one that you're he talking good in about? The second half. How many losses has he suffered in his game started this year, Mike? <laughs> okay. Sure. I mean he looked he he's more capable of leading this team than Joe Flacco is. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. I was I You were you were constantly I, watching that game. Yes, I was watching it closely. Didn't get off to a hot start, but he hasn't played in a while and, and the second half <clears throat> he looked pretty good. Well, Brees Hall. Can, yeah, he's got a superstar you know. at running back, so that's going to help. Kenny Pickett's going to start in Pittsburgh. Good. Kenny Pittsburgh. Okay. Uh, it's lukewarm. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not cold. Uh, but it's like, this is not hot. <laughs> you know, lukewarm. That's what... <laughs> That's what no, dude, define him for high me. Falutin. High falutin. Twenty <laughs> third in scoring, twenty fifth in touchdowns per game, thirtieth in yards per play, twenty fifth in first downs. That was the Mitch Trubisky experience through four weeks. Uh, a lot to be determined on Kenny Pickett's utilization. We've talked about it in years past. When you have a player like George Pickens, and he's getting a lot of reps with the backup quarterback, which is Kenny Pickett, in Pittsburgh. Yeah. yeah, it's a little colder. Yeah, so, I mean, it was like the same joke. Yeah, because we just did but that. But it did not heat up. No. It's <laughs> All like right. Not, we'll keep just, it. Yeah, it was tepid. We'll yeah. keep going. Get the hand on the oven. Crank it up. Yeah, we'll keep Give it. us a good one. We'll keep, we'll keep, <laughs> we'll keep trying. Um, it's going to be hard to have confidence in how things are going to play out. Deontay Johnson, uh, like I said before last week, was on pace for 187 targets. I think he stays in your lineup. George Pickens is a kind of a risky, high risk, high reward play. But and Kenny Pickett's really not on fantasy radar. But it'll be fun to watch because sure. Trubisky's not fun to watch. No, Cordero Patterson placed on IR after undergoing a minor procedure on his knee. He will miss at least four weeks, which will play a big role in today's waiver episode. Yes, it will. We are almost to the waivers where we will probably talk a little bit more about uh, Pickens as well. Okay. We'll be thinking about some jokes. I, yeah, I'm working on it. It's on the Bunsen <laughs> burner right now. I'm trying to heat it up. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna We're be... gonna need, okay, we need to pause the show. We need to hit the lab and get get figure out what is the Kenny no, Pickett I can do joke. this on the fly. Don't worry about it. All right. We'll, we'll find Third out. Third time's the try. Kenny Galladay somehow suffered a knee injury on Sunday, and things are not looking good for him to stand on the sideline this week. Uh, Kadarius Tony, the hamstring. Wandale, the knee. Galladay, the knee. Sterling Shepard on IR. Colin Johnson on IR. Goodness gracious. Daniel Bellinger just hanging around. I mean, this there, there is going to be great opportunity for whichever wide receiver can heal fastest. I mean, Kadarius right. Tony and, and Wandale Robinson, I think that they are the, – the opportunity couldn't be better for them. They just aren't healthy, aren't able to play football right now. But as a, as far as stashes go – I think that they've got a good outlook. And they're 3 and 1, right? Correct, yeah. And so we just need to remember that this team is willing to give a lot of snaps to Richie James and David Sills. And so uh we'll see what the opportunity really looks like. Rashad Bateman, midfoot injury. So he was not on the field in the fourth quarter due to this injury. Another player that we'll talk about with the waivers today in case he misses. Yep. The Manders, Jahan Dotson. Expected to miss one to two weeks with a hamstring injury. This gives you a little bit more confidence in Samuel and McLaurin. A little bit. But not a lot. Brian Robinson, designated to return. That's I believe great. that means the team has three weeks to activate him. Yep, yes. 21 days. Yeah, that, that does not mean he's for sure playing this week, but we're in the process. And meanwhile, you know, the Manders, they get Tennessee, Chicago, Green Bay, the Colts, Minnesota. I mean, I, I'm, I'm picking Brian Robinson up. Jonathan Taylor, listed as did not practice. They didn't practice, though, as a team, right? This was a hypothetically didn't practice. Uh, we'll find out if he has a chance to play. The report came out yesterday. Nothing serious. Has a chance to play on Thursday night. I feel like you got to be pretty banged up to not even hypothetically practice. Uh, like if they're just you know thinking about it, and you're like, man, nope. If we practice today, we wouldn't even have him be limited. He couldn't 
work on the sideline with trainers if we were going to allow right. that. Yeah, I like how they all DNP'd, but he was listed as DNP. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I do. I think it's a possibility he's out there. He he's one oh, of the toughest man. players in football. He had never missed a practice before last week in any level of professional play. It's I I totally get it that if you got Jonathan Taylor, you're and he's active. You're probably putting him out there. But an ankle injury, man. mild toe uh, toe turf. You do not want <laughs> turf toe toe turf. He's got that's a that's when stuff is growing on your toe. Oh, it's boom. like a, it's like a fungus. So fact to Nick. <laughs> Um, I got a big <laughs> patch of toe turf. <laughs> toe turf. Um, oh, yeah, what's the, wrong I, with us? I think if you're a Jonathan Taylor manager, and this might sound, um, you you might not think this is true of you, but you don't want him to be active. I, I really don't think that you want to be forced with the decision to sit an active Jonathan Taylor, even though he will not be full strength against a great defense, and he hasn't been great. The last few weeks, to me, I don't want I don't want to face that decision of saying, "Well, I've got to put him in," because I think I won't. I think I I think I would say, "Oh, stop!" No, I'm serious. I mean, jo Josh Jacobs just had a career week against the same defense. If Jonathan Taylor's playing, he played 88 percent of snaps last week. He's playing the highest percentage he's ever played. You're going to put him in your lineup. You're not going to pivot to Raheem Mostert on Sunday. I I I bet you are right, and I bet that is the wrong decision to make which is why i'm saying it, it just heal up like take take the extra week and uh, get right jerry john said Dak is not ready to come back that makes sense he can't grip a football well mm. one of the big parts of throwing it yep it's is the, the grip it's the number one step before you can throw and the nice thing is they don't really have a reason to rush him back Oh, is that a Cooper Rush that joke? That was a Cooper Rush joke. Okay. Temperature okay. Oh, level. Okay, we're in on that. Temperature it's, level. It's better than <laughs> All right. Than Kenny Pittsburgh? <laughs> All right, fine. Somebody out there in Pittsburgh is going to call him that very soon. I'm sure they already are. And I'll get credit for that 5 out of 10. You betcha. <laughs> that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Welcome to The Fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy. All right. We're into the waivers. Week four is in the books. Bye weeks are on the way. Week six is the beginning of bye weeks. Mm -hmm. So we're going to dive into the wide receiver position and talk about who we're welcoming into the fold this week. The likely rostered players... Romeo Dobbs, Robert Woods. Uh, it, we should have had the news in there about Traylon Burks, but Traylon Burks has uh, turf toe, mm. not toe turf, and will be missing an extended period of time, does not need surgery, but might be placed on IR as soon as today and will miss time recovering. So Robert Woods right now is going to be kind of the de facto number one option on a team that has been res resurgent in the past two weeks. Yeah, I mean, Kyle Phillips, his teammate, rookie wide receiver, who has missed the last couple games with injury as well, he he was very good week one, had a very high level of targets per route run, and if he's worth a, a stash as well because we don't know his, uh, his health, but if he gets to full strength, I think that he will have plenty of opportunity ahead. So Robert Woods, probably rostered, Kyle Phillips, probably not rostered and then uh Dobbs looked great had several plays where he resembled the Devonte Adams uh of last year where I don't know Rogers is throwing him open mm -hmm. which is something that you know you have to trust these receivers and he's looking pretty good there's now a, yep. there's a really specific screen that they run that just looks like a Devonte Adams screen it's like when they the, give them some separation yeah, they, off they, the line. They, they, it's so fast, snaps the ball, throws it, and the, the system. And, yeah, I, I saw the same thing you did where they ran that a couple times for a couple times for Dobbs, and it was like, oh, I've seen that play. My, my biggest Adams. concern with Dobbs is that you buy in, you go and you trade for him, you invest in the, in the hope that he's the one for Rodgers, but you've got this simultaneous, like, uh, building of Christian Watson's confidence – who he's getting snaps like this team seems very committed to getting him out there on the field, 
So I guess I have some concern that, you know, that may diminish the opportunity. Yeah, very well. Might last week was Christian Watson's first back from the injury. So his snaps should rise. You just hope it comes at the expense of Randall Cobb and not at the expense of Romeo Dobbs. All right, let's turn to the main waiver wire pickups, though, at the wide receiver position. I'd love to know who you have at the tippy top of your list. For me, it was difficult uh, ranking these guys, but George Pickens is my number one pickup. Okay. Uh, because you are combining, you know, big playability, rookie potential, new quarterback. The target share last week was 31%. He makes contested catches. I am looking for the home run pickup. I'm not necessarily looking at George Pickens saying, like, you know, is he going to have the best week this next week? I don't know. But Pickens is my number one. I don't know who your guys' number one is. Pickens is right there. I mean, I think part of this is what you're looking for. Pickens is a great pickup solely because he could become the number one target with the quarterback change, and he is really, really talented. That being said, I still project that uh, Kenny Pickett is – good but not great he's a he's a rookie quarterback they they're just not prolific when it comes to counting stats when it comes to your yards and your you know completions there's not going to be a huge pie I don't think to split up and Deontay is there so while the upside is certainly there for Pickens to just you know Odell Beckham explode on the scene and if you want to take the shot take that I don't think it's going to happen in a in a super breakout way so I probably not the next four weeks Buffalo Tampa Miami and Philly yeah Welcome to the NFL. <laughs> um, for me, I think it's actually Michael Gallup. Um, okay, my, my, we have we all have a different number one. Yeah, Michael Gallup was way more involved than I thought he would be. He came right in off of the injury. They they were really slow getting him back, and then they said, "You're up." He played the role. He was a field stretcher. He was involved. I think Noah Brown got a little banged up in this game as well. Going forward, his quarterback situation should improve sure and I think that Michael Gallup is a guy who should be able to be started as a flex option pretty much every week the rest of the season with a, a decent level of confidence now is his ceiling as high as the potential breakout of a rookie sensation no uh, but his likely outcome of being a starter that you can get fantasy points from in, week in and week out I think is the highest of this current week's waiver wire so mike's must be isaiah mckenzie Mine wide is. receiver of the buffalo bills yes it is isaiah mckenzie slot wide receiver for the buffalo bills jamison crowder the veteran they brought in that like their plan over the offseason was crowder's going to be our slot wide receiver uh he broke his ankle this past week so he is he's out for the season and even before the injury they mckenzie had played his way into a timeshare which a timeshare is a slot wide receiver is you you see the spike weeks like week three for Isaiah McKenzie so you where he was seven for 76 and and the touchdown but when he's splitting time you don't really like it now Isaiah McKenzie is in the concussion protocol so there's a chance that he doesn't even play this week but the other option for them is Khalil Shakir fifth rounder fifth round so a fifth round rookie right now the so the when you're making your decision between these players, to me, it's the way I'm looking at it is a fifth round rookie wide receiver. Will he, when McKenzie is healthy, will he, will Shakir really take 50% of the snaps away the way that Jamison Crowder did? Or is McKenzie going to trend closer to a full time player? And that's how I'm projecting it. And that's why I have him as my number one wide receiver pickup. I love Isaiah McKenzie's talent. I if he gets 100% of the snap roll, roll or you know close to it you know 80 90% he's going to be great for fantasy. He he would be my number 1 except the concussion protocol thing. I you know if he ends up missing this week I I I don't know how much to a, the situation could factor in and bleed into other teams where you're just it's erring on the side of caution of you know let's give it another week not have uh, any of that. And that's you know that's probably not going to affect these teams that are trying to just win now and get their players on the field but it, it does factor in the back of my mind of like well if he misses a week and then you've got one week and then the bye week I, I just think it, it's a little risky and there's no guarantee he comes in and takes over 100 percent of that slot sure. role there is the chance that Khalil Shakir comes in and 
takes the Crowder role. Now, Shakir, those hips don't lie. So, I <laughs> oh man, I, uh, I don't huh? know where are we. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. Wow, I think I didn't like the delivery. Yeah, I well, I was going Tupac at first. So I completely switched. Oh, you know, okay. so I'm really, you know, we're workshopping a lot of stuff today. Yeah, live here on the podcast. But um, <laughs> if Isaiah McKenzie, we don't have writers. <laughs> if, if Isaiah McKenzie misses with a concussion and Crowder is out, you've got a a banged up Kumaro, a banged up um, Gabe Davis. I think Khalil Shakir yes. is is a fine pickup and play. And a, and a really solid DFS play. I don't have any idea what his uh, salary is, but it has to be next to nothing. Yeah, P I, Pittsburgh allowing the seventh most fantasy points to wide receivers, and Mike Tomlin teams generally, they allow, like they get beat in the slot. Like this, uh, Maybe they're just picking their poison of where they want to really shut down and they just let slot, slot wide receivers go. So I agree. that That's, that's part of the, the appeal of McKenzie. Should he get cleared and play, there's so much upside where George Pickens – Looks like a fantastic player. The target share was incredible. But now you're relying on the, the the rookie quarterback. And for Gallup, I mean, it looks like what Dak's first game back will be Philadelphia. And that's, that's not a great opportunity for any Cowboys. But Detroit and Chicago after that for Dallas. So... A Gallup is a, is a fine pickup. We're just, we all, we all play the game a little bit different. Yeah. Well, uh whether these guys are first, second, or third, everyone we've mentioned is a really good waiver wire pickup. It's a good week for wide receivers. Yeah, I don't think Shakir's going to have a path to being picked up in redraft personally. If Isaiah McKenzie is out? Yeah, if he's out, then, then yeah, that's he, what he could be used. Yeah, that's the only way that, that he um, should be in. But Devin Duvernay, could, uh, he's only 59% rostered. He's a must start this week if Rashad Bateman was to miss. He's Agreed. also... Not a bad start anyways. I mean, he's getting targets every single week. He's their clear wide receiver, too. Uh, 1B. Okay, well, sure. I'm just, <laughs> I'm saying that, like... That was just a shot at Bateman, who hasn't been able to perform yeah. in the past couple of weeks. Wandale Robinson, uh, we mentioned the gi giant situation. He's the one to pick up, in my opinion. This regime, they brought him in. They were using him. He got hurt. Uh, but I think... He's got the best chance of volume in this offense. Rondale Moore, I mean, I haven't seen anything that makes me think Rondale Moore is start worthy. He's, you know, th there's all this offseason talk. They're going to finally use him down the field. They tried that one time. He didn't even know where he was on the field. He landed out of bounds. Every other target was behind the line of scrimmage. Same old targeting of Rondale Moore. It was depressing. And you're, you've got a, you got a clock counting down to the return of, like they just brought Antoine Wesley back this week. You are integrating Trey McBride and you're getting DeAndre Hopkins back. You're always going to start Hollywood before Rondale Moore. I just I don't see the path. One of the things that was interesting to me looking at kind of the numbers behind the scenes was that Rondale played a surprising amount on the outside in the AJ Green role, which I think Rondale we've been excited to have him come in and play the slot role that Greg Dortch was really playing. And so if you know, Antoine Wesley comes back. I assume he'll be playing that A.J. Green role until A.J. Green comes back and hopefully long after. Uh, but that is my path of hope in Rondell is that if if they put him in the full-time Greg Dortch role, maybe he can get the targets Dortch was seeing. Yeah, Dortch only on the field 36% of the time last week. Uh, drop candidates, Allen Robinson. Yep. For some of these names, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not auto dropping him, but I would absolutely rather have Gallup, Pickens, McKenzie, Claypool. Yes, see yes. you later. He's, he's a drop drop. Jarvis Landry. Yeah, um, I mean, he's one of those where you don't have to drop him, but I would drop him for any of the names we talked about I'm, today. I'm guessing that that Jameis will be back this week. Um, no pun intended on on the back injury, but he seemed like he was close-ish, close just not enough to, to start this week. And he's got a good matchup, and we got to see. Yeah, he's playing against the Seattle Seahawks, who that's a delightful matchup for uh, quarterbacks right now. And what's the status of Michael Thomas? Just don't know yet. Julio Jones. He's gone. Yeah. I, he, he was he was out there and ineffective, and I don't think you want to play the, the game every week. I agree. Week. DJ Moore. No. Oh, uh, man. He had 11 targets. Yeah. I would I would drop DJ Moore for... Gallup, Duvernay, 
McKenzie, Pickens. I'd rather have Gallup Man. than DJ Moore, but I think that's the this. You've got Baker. That's what you're stuck yeah. with. And if they if they pivot off of Baker, you're stuck with Darnold. So DJ Moore is not a must drop. He's just a look. You're trying to get wins in fantasy. Yeah. So who's going to help you the most? And I think you just have to make that call. And then Traylon Burks, what do you do with him? Because uh, he's not been moved to IR yet in leagues. People are making waiver claims today. If if he hasn't been moved to IR and you can't if or you don't have an IR spot in your league, you have to drop him. Uh, he's going to miss too much time uh, to have clogging up a roster spot. He hadn't even done anything yet other than look good, like pass the eyeball test, but he hasn't done anything for fantasy yet. Coming off of the injury, you, you can't wait another month clogging a roster spot. No, he's gone. All right. Uh, in a minute, we're going to dive into what running backs we should welcome to the fold right after this break. All right, the the ever important, difficult to find running back position, waiver wire day. There are some really yeah. interesting names that look like some fab will get spent. Yes. But I think that they're worth discussing because Because it's all a trap. <laughs> It's probably <laughs> I think that there are a couple situations yeah. that I don't think are are an instant trap if to put it that way. What's difficult is there are situations like Naeem Hines, right? He's 66% rostered. He's going to be available in a lot of leagues and you don't know and won't know today whether Jonathan Taylor's out, I presume. I mean, it's possible they come out and say he's just out. But if you don't know, it's hard to sit here and say, "Hey, go spend all your fab on Naeem Hines." playing against Denver where they won't just exclusively use him and the offense has been trashed. It's like we're sitting here saying Jonathan Taylor's been bad. Well, the offensive line... So certainly the backup will have Right, that, that's the hard part. So like, <laughs> It doesn't usually work for others. So you get into that Phillip position... Philip Lindsay will have tremendous success this week. So really, when I look at Hines, I don't know if... Like, if you're the Jonathan Taylor manager, there's an added incentive to roster Naeem Hines. Because of re-injury risk, having somebody that you can start. But I just don't know if I'd spend up on him versus somebody like, let's throw Raheem Mostert out there, who's getting the majority of the work in Miami. Would rather have Mostert so, by a lot. And you get a longer-term value there in, in my mind, right? Mm -hmm. So so Naeem Hines is, is not more than like a 10% of my fab. And I, I won't get him because of that, because everyone else will rush to him. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's probably rostered in the majority of leagues, but wherever he is, people will spend up on him, and I, I doubt he pays off on that value. And, of course, even if Jonathan Taylor does miss and we go, okay, well, we're you know we're uh, not sure it's a great matchup and he, you know, the offense hasn't been good, well, Jonathan Taylor's coming back. You know, they said it's not serious. There's a question as to whether he plays this week, so I'd imagine the following Sunday – He's back, and so there's a very temporary uh, uptick for Naeem Hines. I would not break the bank at all. I agree with you. And Brian Robinson was drafted and stashed in a lot of leagues, and so they put him on the um, – they can bring him up from injured reserve, the non-football injury list, over the next three weeks. How much are you investing, Mike? Would you blow a number one waiver spot on Brian Robinson? And would you? Uh, yeah. How much fab would you actually spend, knowing that you could still be a couple weeks away? I w I don't. I wouldn't burn a top priority. And what I like about Robinson is the. I think that the main waiver competition is going to be these other guys we're going to get into, like because because Robinson is still a stash. You don't like we're we're being told he's close to return. I, I have no idea. Like, that could be three weeks. Like, they could take the entire 21-day uh, limit that they have to, to finally call him up, and even then you don't even know how much work he's going to get. So this is just a – if your team is looking good, you don't want to break the bank because these running backs are – like the, the Denver situation, the Atlanta situation, they're very – they aren't clear uh, – there, there's some value to extract, but it's not clear who you should go after. So I think if you're looking good with your team, you just kind of put a low, low fab bid on Robinson uh, to be prepared for a couple weeks from now. Yeah, I, I, I personally don't see the same upside. Let's say he's fully healthy 
and he's been healthy all year, uh, but now he's just uh, magically allowed to play football. He's still not on a great team. Splitting time, not going to be the pass catching back, you know, when you've got J.D. McKissick there. And it's not like he's just – like, let's say you just replace Antonio Gibson – with Brian Robinson, and they say, hey, Antonio Gibson, you now are the water boy. You don't get to play football. We weren't excited to play Antonio Gibson, so are we saying he's just that much better of a football player, but then they're not actually making him the water boy. Antonio Gibson will get work. So they a, might. <laughs> sure, but my point is he's going to be involved. So this is a three-way committee. I just don't see the upside of opportunity even though I fully admit the Manders really like the player. I mean, they spent a third-round pick, and usually, historically, that kind of draft capital on a running back, especially an Alabama running back, does pay off. But I just don't see the, I don't see the, the, the league-winning upside with the, Brian Robinson. The upside to me is Brian Robinson's second game back. Sunday morning, we all wake up, and it doot, 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 doot. Antonio Gibson is a healthy scratch today. Oh, man, water like, boy. That is not outside – uh, like that's a that's not a non-zero chance but he, to and me. And at running back, you don't have to talk about exclusively league-winning upside for yes. value to pick them up. Like we have major needs in terms of start-worthy running backs. We're about to talk about Caleb Huntley of the Atlanta Falcons. So I think you're just looking at start-worthy player at some point. Hopefully, over fifty percent of the snaps at some point and goal line. And that's where bad Washington teams still provided 10-plus touchdowns to Antonio Gibson at one at one point in time. So I think that that's my hope is that in three, four weeks, you're like, hey, I can start that guy, uh, which is saying something at running back. So let's talk about Atlanta, and then we'll talk about Denver. Atlanta has Tyler Algier and Caleb Huntley. The surprise of putting Patterson on IR leads to a clear path for a run-heavy team. Caleb Huntley was the slight Slightly better player in terms of fantasy output last year than Tyler Algier, or last week than Tyler Algier. They were both double digits. Algier is the fifth round pick. Went ten for eighty four. Caleb Huntley was ten for fifty six and scored off the practice squad. So I think Algier will and deserves more of the attention on the waiver wire. But I'm not certain that you don't have a kind of, you know pretty much 50-50 timeshare with a lot of run opportunities for this this uh, tandem, but you got Tampa this week. I, I think you have uh, a, a very split timeshare. I agree with that. It's not going to be the Tyler Algier show. Caleb Huntley will be involved, but Tyler Algier is certainly the player you want. He was more effective. You know, They both got 10 carries. He had about 30 more yards. He had a nice big breakaway run. I liked, you know, I think we all kind of yeah. like Tyler Algier's college tape. So this isn't a player coming out of nowhere. But the main thing is one of these guys was running routes and one of these guys was not. Caleb Huntley was not involved at all in the in the passing game whatsoever. And even though Tyler Algier only had one target, and I don't expect a heavy uh, passing volume from Marcus Mariota to the running back position, when you're talking about negative game scripts, which will happen more than it than just this breakdown we saw last week where Atlanta won the game, I think Algier will be far more valuable than Caleb Huntley. So I would be going much more after Algier. That being said, this is temporary. It, it, yes, it's, it a is. it's a month-long IR. It's stint, shorter than that. And Tampa Bay, San Francisco, for, for at least, those are the next two weeks. So that's half of the month-long stint for Cordero Patterson on IR. It's it, – I'm not starting Tyler Algier next week. Here, against no, so so if that if you're not starting him next week, that you it might be even shorter because Damian Williams, who was the starting running back for this team in Week One, he went on to IR after that game with the rib injury. I, so that would make him eligible next week to come back. Like Damian, so is Williams, this a trap? That's what I'm saying. Of the, this situation is not clear. That if you need a spot start of some volume. Arthur Smith will go high T and try and establish it. I that it probably won't work. For yeah, because he's seen Marcus Mariota before. <laughs> it probably won't work. Tyler Algier is the play, but he is. I'm not breaking the bank for him. Going, we got four weeks here of Tyler Algier because I think there is a decent probability that Damian Williams comes back and is the number one running back so on this team. Would you rather have the 72% of snaps Raheem Mostert over Algier and Huntley? 
Yes. Because you'll get them cheaper. I was going to say, for what it's going to cost you, it's the it's the better play. Because I don't think people are scrambling to get Mostert the way that they're going to scramble to get Algier. And, yeah, I think Mostert is more valuable. Al- Atlanta is eight-and-a-half-point dogs right now against Tampa I- I'll, Bay. I'll be putting in claims on Tyler Algier. I will. And, honestly, if I've got enough, uh, to, you know, if it's a larger bench, Damian Williams might be someone you should yes. be picking up as well. Mike Boone. For the Denver Broncos, you know, obviously Melvin Gordon, if he's out there, is going to be the starter, but you're going to have a committee. Mike Boone played more snaps than Gordon last week. Part of that could have been directly a result of Gordon's fumble. Or Gordon also had an injury, like what a neck. I think he had a neck yeah. problem coming into the he's game. Got, he does have a neck. Well, wow, yes. <laughs> but he's an injured He's neck. got a problem with it. Um, and then Latavius Murray was just snatched. Off the Saints practice squad. Uh, <laughs> so the funny. Saints were dumb here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Latavius looked great, got into a rhythm last week, and now gets the flight of Denver because the Broncos pounced on him. And, you know, you're looking at this situation saying, do I want to sign and play Mike Boone? I don't really want to do that. He went from being potentially the number one waiver pickup to. Yeah being potentially unrosterable with Lat- the Latavius Murray signing. This is a guy who has had pass protection problem, dropped two g- game-killing passes last week, and then they go out and they pick up Latavius Murray, who is a good veteran. He's a f- fine enough pass catcher. He's a good pass protector. You know what else he doesn't do? Fumble. Yeah, that's true. So I, I think this was a really um, – smart pickup you know when you're talking about you, you you don't have a lot of options out there this time of the year to just go find a running back on the waivers and they signed him off of the practice squad Latavius Murray I would pick up before Mike Boone for sure and when you sign him off the practice squad are they stuck on the starting roster the rest yes. of the year yes yes so he'll be he'll be up I would still sign Gordon over Murray I totally agree and over Boone Mm-hmm. because like you said you don't know how much was a little bit of an injury situation you've seen him used as a workhorse in the in the past he's more talented than these guys if 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 Gordon is out on your waivers he's probably not worth checking though if he was for some reason dropped I I would I would go hard after Melvin Gordon Isaiah Pacheco he needs to be added uh yeah Lee, I mean Chiefs running back we're bouncing all over the place with the Kansas City Chiefs Clyde Edwards Alaire is the only consistent right now it looked like it was going to be McKinnon. I mean, he was evening up the snaps with Clyde, but if uh, it's one week at a time right now, and if, if last week is any indication, it looks like it's going to be Clyde and Pacheco. Uh, so he, he's he should be picked up. I don't know if we're at anything other than just stashing him and watching right That's now. That's what he is. He's just a stash, but he is getting more and more involved, and his talent might be the best of the three backs there. Would you drop Chase Edmonds to pick up Raheem Mostert off the waiver wire? Yes. Yeah, I would rather have uh, I, w- I would rather have Mostert than Edmonds. Yeah, but would you drop Daryl Henderson to pick up Raheem Mostert, Tyler Algier, Mostert? Yes. Naeem Hines. Uh, Hines. Daryl Henderson <laughs> feels like a player you're holding and, yeah, ho- he and, does. and hoping that he really does. He gets like you're not hoping, but in the event of a Cam Akers injury or demotion, you have a player. Yeah. But right now, you can't play him. No, I agree with that. That's why I was so hesitant. Of he could turn into something, but as of right now, you can't play him. If Daryl Henderson were on the waivers, though we would be making claims on him to pick him up. That's the, the, the running back landscape. When you said would I drop but Chase Edmonds to play him, though. for – No, not to play him, but would I drop uh, Chase Edmonds for Raheem Mostert? I would rather have Mostert. But I don't want – like, if this was my roster, I'm probably not dropping Chase Edmonds to pick him up. I'm probably dropping a, a – you know, I would rather, like, drop a Michael Gallup-level wide receiver that I like – then yeah this is not we're not recommending that I mean, this is not like point, go through yeah. and purge your roster this is would you sign this player in lieu of this player yes um travis Etienne. oh man <laughs> yeah i mean I, 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 work work pony work pony extraordinaire <laughs> work pony i like it i i would man i still would not drop travis Etienne. 
Edmonds yeah. or Etienne on your roster as a stash? Etienne. Uh, Michael Carter, you want to boot him? No, you can't boot him just yet. I mean, he's he's the same. He, like, he's not a starter anymore, but he's still an insurance running back that if Brees Hall misses time, Michael Carter will be featured on Tuesday's show. A, a, a good a good uh, barometer check here. I said I would not drop DJ Moore. Like that's that's a guy I'm not dropping. He has so many targets, 11 targets this last week, 6 each of the first 3 weeks. But if I had to make a decision between DJ Moore or these running backs, the, the Chase Edmonds, the Travis Etienne's, just because of the running back landscape, I would rather fill my bench with these running backs. You, yeah. you can pick up a wide receiver almost any week and find a start Sunday morning. You just cannot do that with running backs. So uh, honestly, I'm I'm not dropping any of those running backs. I'm just dropping more wide receivers to pick up more running backs. Tight ends. Let's welcome some into the fold. Main waiver wire pickups this week. If Njoku is out there, grab him. Two strong weeks. 65% rostered. He I, is a uh, must-start tight end at this point with this landscape. I could not believe that he is still available in a third of active leagues. That is mind-blowing. After his week performance, two you know two weeks ago, he was great. He would be just about my number one pickup of all of these guys. If I need a tight end, right? Yes. If I needed a tight end, um, you know, which lots of teams do, I would take him above all of these running backs and wide receivers. Robert Tunyon scored last week, forty percent rostered. Cursory at it, tight end. Yep. Hayden Hurst, Tyler Conklin. Conklin, he was involved still with we wanted to see what his involvement would be with the changeover to Zach Wilson. Conk, conk. He's better than a lot of rosters. He tight is, ends right but now. It, uh, again, it's the what I was concerned about with Conklin is just his piece of the pie was not tremendous. Like he's not getting Tyler Higby target percentage. So if the pie were to go down into the dryer, then Tyler Conklin's targets would go down, and it did. It dropped down to five. So he was he he ended up with fifty two yards. So that's pretty nice. But three for three would, catches is. I'd have him I'm, over I'm the other guys. over Irv Smith. I'd rather have That's him than fine. Irv Smith. Irv Smith, two for 32, three for 23 the last two weeks. But You're getting into the zone of, like, hopefully they score. I Otherwise, take, they're disappointing you. Njoku's the priority, and then Big Bob Tunyon is yeah. the other one I want. Dalton Schultz, are you willing to cut him for either of those two names? No. Uh -uh. George Kittle? No. <laughs> Obviously no, not. No, 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 no. Uh, Irv Smith, I would, though, for yes. those. Defensive... Um, options this week lay the, it out for me Jason so the first name to bring up sounds ridiculous it's the Buffalo Bills and you're like what the Bills aren't but they played Baltimore and 20% of leagues dropped the Bills because you know you don't always want to roster two uh defenses if they are available you absolutely must go hard after them because they're an every week start no matter the matchup their defense I think is going to be they great. are they're really beaten up though Yes, they I are. I think you're going to see them give up more points. Sure. For, for they're not available while. in our league, so who are you picking up then? Um, if they're not available, the Jacksonville Jaguars defense has been really good. This last week was tough against the Philadelphia Eagles, but they've been getting after the quarterback, tons of sacks, and they play against Houston. So that would be the number one that I'm looking at. And I would say the Miami Dolphins. Uh, I know that you're saying that Zach Wilson won, which is accurate, but he completed 50% of his passes and turned the ball over twice, got sacked once. Oh, Miami's a great start. Yeah. Tennessee plays Washington and Carson Wentz, and their defense has been playing better. And uh, Kansas City plays the Raiders as well. That was Welcome to the Fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy with Galaxy Z Fold 4. Unfold an immersive screen to watch games in full detail and maximize your viewing experience on the go. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Full stream ahead. All right, streaming quarterback options for this week on the waiver wire. I'm going with Jameis. I love it. Jameis Winston, if he's back, he plays Seattle. Oh, that part, I mean, yeah. Yeah, he, if his back is back. <laughs> if he's not playing, I don't love it. Yes, less fantasy uh, upside. Seattle allowing the highest yards per attempt in the league. That's who the Saints play this week. And 42% uh, of pass attempts against Seattle have been a first down. He has Chris Olave, who is a weapon downfield. Might get Michael Thomas back, might get Alvin Kamara back, and then Jarvis Landry is going to be out, be back out there. I'm going to go with Trevor Lawrence. He had a down week in Philadelphia in the rain. It was a bad game where um, even though the, the, the Jags looked pretty good, they were in the game for the majority of it, 
four fumbles lost, one interception, really bad game for Trevor Lawrence, but he was a quarterback one the previous two weeks. He plays against Houston. He's at home. I think Trevor Lawrence with this new offense, new coaching staff, new weapons is he's going to be he's going to be pretty good. And I'll throw out that the following week he plays uh, in Indiana. Uh, he plays against the Colts in Indianapolis. And if you're a you know Jalen Hurts manager, uh, a Jared Goff, if you've been rolling with him, bye weeks are going to start. So you might want to look two weeks deep if you've got yeah, some of those point. players. And I'm going to ride the lightning with Carson Wentz. The Manders, what? He, look, they, the Manders are at home, and Tennessee, three of their four weeks, they have given up top 12 production to the quarterback position. Guessing it wasn't last week against Matt Ryan. Uh, I don't have the numbers <laughs> in front of me Guessing uh, when they did, but uh, Carson Wentz at home against that defense. I think that he will be able to be stream-worthy. Would you play Jared Goff over all three of those names based on the fact oh, that – Matt Go Ryan was the QB 12. Oh, he had the um, Moale cox uh, yeah, two combo. Yeah, baby. He looks so bad. Um, Jared Goff, though, would you would you stay in the flames with Jared Goff and play him over Winston Lawrence and Wentz? I think I would, even though it's New England. Jared Goff and this, like you said, perfect scenario: worst defense, best offense. I I, I don't hate playing Jared Goff, but I would not play uh, if I had uh, the choice between Trevor Lawrence against Houston or Jared Goff on the road against New England, I would take Trevor Lawrence. QB5, Jared Goff. Oh, he's been great. Yeah. And, I, and I love the fact that the offense is good and the defense is bad. But I would prefer him in a dome, and I would prefer him not against the Patriots. I give give me If he was playing Seattle, heck yeah. I mean, if Amon Ra is back, I'm, I'm good playing Goff. All right. Uh, anything else to cover? Any news updates, Kyle? It's nothing right now. Uh, there is one bit, bit of news. You're back with the Atlanta cap. We're going to clinch the division today. That's Oh, we. We. The Red Sox or the uh, the Braves? Come on. I'm from Atlanta. I know. I, know. I, I understand that. But we're that just is, not happy about your. It's so weird. The Sox. It's, it's, you it's like not Sox a different and, sport. Yeah. It's just like if you showed up, would you ever go to a game in Atlanta with that hat on? With the Red Sox hat? Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. Coward. Show your allegiance to mm -hmm. your favorite team. I just I can't even do it. Like, there are teams. Like, I've, I've thought about this. I have a, a bunch of hats, and I, I like browsing for new hats. And there are some teams that have cool logos and stuff. The, the fun but it's thing, just it's, it's in the constitution of fandom. Like, mm -hmm, I don't yeah. – I'm not allowed to buy those hats. Which, which is great. Because I have children, and I need to teach them in the way that they should go. I can wear any baseball hat I want. Right. Because too. I don't care. That's right. I would just you say, wouldn't even know it's a baseball. What hat. is this logo? <laughs> I like it or I don't like it. Um, the only other uh, thing I'll point I out like before, socks. You, before you push the button, I think we skipped over uh, Rashad White, and it's oh, worth yeah, knowing. Yeah, yeah. Sure, uh, he's only thirty eight percent rostered. He was much more involved than usually played thirty eight percent of snaps, and they were rotating entire drives. That's what was really exciting about it is that they Tampa used, Bay, yes, Tampa Bay rookie running back. They used him as essentially for you know for the drive that they rotated as an every down back. So he was in on the pass catching downs and the short yardage. Should Leonard Fournette go down to injury, which obviously he's he's built for a workload and might never go down. He but also Rashad, misses games. Rashad White will be dominant for fantasy uh, given that opportunity. That is going to conclude today's episode of the show. Check out our community at jointhefoot.com. Lots of new tools over there. See you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.